We're going to move on to simplifying expressions. Now this is going to introduce more vocabulary for you. And this, this example is more going to be for how to do this. It's not going to connect it with where this comes from. Now this, this practice of simplifying expressions, all expressions used to be written in English language form. There wasn't, uh, we didn't use so many symbols. So, which uh, is why we, we still try to teach you how to write expressions from English words to these uh, mathematical forms where you have numbers, symbols, um, and letters. Okay. Once you're able to write your expressions, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure they're written in simplest form. Okay. Um, this will make it a lot easier to manipulate and to, to deal with. There's several parts of an expression just like there's several parts of a sentence. You have your nouns, your verbs, your adjectives. Math is the same way. We have different parts of our sentences. We have pieces we add and subtract together. We call them terms. So I'm going to circle all of the terms right here. 9 is a term. 3x is a term. 8x is a term. These are all terms because we're adding them together. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So the pieces in our addition and subtraction problems are called terms. The parts of a multiplication problem, like 3 times x, those are called factors. And we're going to talk more about that when we get into quadratics. But for right now, we have three terms here. Okay. Now coefficient. Coefficient refers to the number that is in front of a variable. Okay. That is a coefficient. So in our coefficients here are 8 and the sign always goes with the coefficient. So negative 3 is going to be our coefficient here. Okay. Let's look over here at this other one before we move on to constants. Our coefficients are going to be negative 2 and positive 5. Okay. So those are our coefficients. Those are numbers in front of variables. 17, negative 1, those aren't going to count as coefficients because they are not next to or being multiplied by a variable. Constants. Constants are nice. Constants are these numbers that are not being multiplied by a variable. So 9, or positive 9, is going to be our constant on this, in this expression. Over here, 17 is a constant, as well as negative 1 is a constant. So try to remember the difference between a coefficient and a constant. A coefficient is being multiplied by a variable, and a constant is not. The sign always goes with um, the number in question. Okay, so here are some steps of how to simplify an expression. We need we need to use the distributive property to get rid of any parentheses. Then we combine like terms, and then we put terms with variables in A, B, C order, and a constant at the end or constants at the end. Hopefully, those are all combined with the like terms. So, distribute to get rid of parentheses. So, the distributive property works like such. If we're multiplying a number or a number in a variable outside of parentheses we need to we can distribute it meaning just like when you distribute a products to different stores if you are selling iPods Apple distributes those to Verizon to T-Mobile to Cricket to AT&T Apple doesn't just sell them on their own but they distribute it they share it with those pieces so we have this number outside that's kind of like our apple and they're going to distribute to this 4x and this minus 5 remember the signs matter and they go with the number in question so 3 times 4x and I draw a little arrow to indicate that we're multiplying times so 3 times 4x that's 3 times 4 is 12 3 times x uh, that x just comes with it it's 12x and we don't know what x is so we can't worry about what that's going to be so we just leave it 12 times x 3 times negative 5 so it's negative 15 okay and that simplifies our expression and we're finished okay because there are no like terms to combine um, and I'll explain more about like terms in the next problem and put terms with variables in ABC order so this is the only variable so we're done number two same deal we're going to take negative 4 and distribute it. So we're going to multiply it times x and times negative 2. So negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Or in other words, negative 4 times x. That is the same way to write that. 
but we're not done. We've got to do negative 4 times negative 2. So a negative times a negative is positive, and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. So combining like terms. Now like terms, those are going to be any of your terms, remember pieces you're adding together, that have the same variable. So I'm going to write like terms here, and this is going to be our definition. Like terms have same variable, and same exponential power, or same exponent, if you will. All right. So they're going to have the same variable and the same exponential power. You need both of these in order for it to qualify as a like term. And we'll see that in this example here, number four. Okay. So number four, we have two sets of parentheses, which means we're going to distribute twice. Um, so two times b. Now the arrow came under. It doesn't matter. Um, it's still two times b. So two times b. And then also two times negative three. So negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Now over here, we're adding, so we're going to continue to add. All right. Positive 4 times positive 2b. So positive 4 times 2b, that's 4 times 2 is 8b. And then 4 times positive 2, that's positive 8. Okay. Notice how I didn't lose the variable. I didn't lose any numbers. I had two pieces in here, and I'll have two pieces when I'm done multiplying. I have two pieces in here. I have two pieces when I'm done multiplying. I'm adding here, so we're going to continue to add. Now, combining like terms, these two terms have the same variable, and those variables have the same exponent, namely none, or we understand it to be 1. So we're going to add them. How do we do that with the variables? Well, just add the coefficients. So 2 b plus 8b is going to be 10b. Well, now I have these numbers here with no variables, negative 6 and positive 8. So negative 6 plus positive 8 is positive 2. And if you don't know how to do that by hand or in your head, do it in calculator. That's fine. This expression cannot be simplified any further. And our variables are already written in alphabetic order because there's only one of them. All right. What happens if I don't have a number outside the parentheses and all I have is a negative sign? Well, that negative sign, we can rewrite this. That's negative 1, 7y minus 4. And we will multiply that negative 1 times all these pieces. Okay, So this negative indicates it's going to be negative 1. So negative 1 times 7y makes it negative 7y. And negative 1 times negative 4 gets me positive 4, because a negative times a negative is positive, and 1 times 4 is 4. Well, wh what, about, uh, what about more challenging problems, kind of like down here? Excuse me, down here, number 7. I have a negative 5, and I'm subtracting over here. So let's take care of these parentheses first. So negative 5 times a negative 8g, that's positive 40g. Negative 5 times negative 3, that's positive 15, because negative times negative is positive. Well, remember, this is, doesn't have a number out in front of the parentheses, but it has that's negative, so that's negative 1. Well, negative 1 times 5g, that's negative 5g. Now, notice, notice here, the sign becomes the operation, because this is negative 5g, we're now subtracting. So this is negative 5g. So we're subtracting that 5g from this. And then negative times positive 3 is negative 3. So I'm also subtracting 3. All right, so signs matter, so you need to be careful. I'm going to leave you to do these other ones by yourself. Um, good luck. If you have questions, let me know.